Hello again, and welcome to Off the Beaten Tracks. Uh, I was at the record store today, hitting the dollar bins and uh, the expensive bins as usual. And the thing I like about the dollar bins is you never know what you're going to find. Uh, sometimes you'll go in and uh, it's divided up into rock and all kinds of you know Christian or religious or world music, and then you'll get into the easy listening uh, groups and. Basically, it's always an interesting treasure hunt. Sometimes you'll go in and there will be just an armful of classic rock, Loggins and Messina, Pablo Cruz, those kind of albums, uh, Graham Parker, uh, you know, any kind of thing, Neil Diamond kind of things in there. And they're all in great shape. They all look uh, mint or close to mint. And, you know, that's what you pick up. And sometimes, like today, I went in and, man, either my eyesight is getting better or it, these these records were just not in very good shape. So you go down and there wasn't a lot in, even easy listening, because they'd been a few weeks ago and they really hadn't added anything to that. But I did score something I hadn't had a lot of. And now I think I have kind of a nice little cache of them, banjo music albums. So here we go. I got this one. This is the Banjo Revolution. This is Abe Brown and Friends. Now, I don't know how many banjo uh, players have friends, but he apparently does. Nice mustache there. Okay, we go on to this one, Sealed. I love a banjo by Art Todd. Sealed. Somebody didn't love banjo music because this is probably 40, 50 years old at least, and nobody opened it. And it can go around. Here's... Um, Jacques Gautier, uh, Creole Rice Yerba Buena Jazz Band. And you can see right here, she's playing the banjo and waiting for a big supper there. And uh, we got the Honky Tonk Rag Pickers. This also sealed. Dollar uh, MVM Mount Vernon Music. Uh, is that uh, back east? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, there's the banjo there, a little cartoon of one, but that is definitely a banjo. Your father's mustache. Now, this is the world's finest banjo band. So some of the other ones, maybe if you're not so picky, you'll play those. But this one, because it is the finest, this one is definitely a must. And I believe, yes, this is recorded live at your father's mustache. Don't know where that is. If anybody knows, please let us know. Pick this one up. This this is obviously a uh, reissue of some sort, uh, but there's the banjo right there for Sweet Emma and her Preservation Hall Jazz Band. Obviously, the Preservation Hall Jazz Band is exceedingly famous. Uh, I'm guessing this picture is old enough that these people are no longer preserved. And, of course, you have the finest uh, jazz band, but you also have the banjo band, but you also have the banjo kings. So is it possible the banjo kings would be playing better banjo music than the finest jazz band, uh, ban, ban, banjo band, I'm getting a little tongue-tied here, uh, because they are the kings of banjo. And that's good time jazz, and it's just says banjo band at the bottom, I believe, but it, you can only see, the, I think, this is obviously some sort of reissue. They've used a cheap, if you look here, they've used a cheap cutout of the two guys from the band. And the original title was on the original picture. But since they've just cut out these pieces and pasted them, you only got NJO here and BAN here. I think they were supposed to be in the different order, but they're not in this picture. Now here, if you didn't think banjo music was high kicking, well, Burlington Birdie is going to show you different. Burlington Birdie here, a dollar. Good shape. I got two of these just in case one didn't pan out. Now, these are banjo specialists. They're not the banjo kings, and unfortunately, they're not the world's best banjo band, but they are specialists in the banjo. So you'd think they'd be better, but apparently not. Now, you can listen to the banjo all you want, and sure, Everybody loves to listen to the banjo, but you can also, with this record, and this is a two-record set. I'm going to open this up. I don't do many go gatefold opens, but there you go. Balloon, so you know how high-kicking it is right there. You can sing along, and I looked in here, and there are lyrics. The lyric sheets here, so you can listen to the banjo. Now, these aren't the kings, these aren't the specialists, and these aren't the best, but these are people who will play the banjo and let you sing along with these here lyrics. Next, 
Now, I was really surprised because I love these covers. This is a great cover. Uh, this is Joe Finger's car and his swinging string band. And what string band wouldn't have? A strong banjo. And there it is. But great cover. This was in really good shape on the Crescendo layer. No Capital Light Records here. Really, really like this. Haven't listened to it yet, but I know I'm going to love it. And last but not least, one of the great covers, and I bought two of these as well, just to show you how much I liked it. This is Banjo on my knee, because where else are you going to put a banjo? You may not be the best. You may not be a specialist. You may not be the kings. But anybody, anybody who's bought a banjo can put it on their knee. So keep that in mind, because that's exactly what John Cowley did. And the chicks apparently dig it. So there's my show for today. Please subscribe at the bottom, and there'll be more crazy stuff uh, maybe the next time, or maybe I'll just do a straight review. Who knows? Anyway, thank you for watching Off the Beaten Tracks.